Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got another gun gripe episode for you, mm. and this one is a doozy, okay? The ATF has basically released a letter saying that certain bolt-action uppers designed to go on various AR-15 type platforms are now going to be considered a firearm in their own regard. Mm -hmm. uh, so what what does all this mean, okay? And, and they're specifically, I believe, referring to things like the 50 caliber mm -hmm. uppers and things like that, but... It can really go in a few different directions, and this is brand new right out of the ATF as in, what, just a few days ago? Uh, literally. The the letter to Safety Harbor Firearms, that's who we're discussing, it was dated July 17th okay. of 2018, but basically Safety Harbor petitioned the ATF in reference to a 50 BMG upper assembly for the AR, you know, as far as importation and everything goes, and, you know, the... This, this article is on TFB, and they, they broke it down pretty well, but just the, the skinny of it is, all right, um, barrel actions equal receivers per the ATF, all right? So the ATF has determined that the receiver of a bolt-action rifle is the part of the firearm to which the barrel attaches and provides housing for the bolt and, in most cases, the trigger. In most bolt-action firearms, the stock is also generally attached to the receiver. The receiver must be marked in accordance with the Gun Control Act and federal regulations. All right, you think about, okay, Remington 700 or a Model 70 or any other standard bolt action, the trigger does attach to the action itself. And the barrel. And the barrel. And the bolt. And, the bolt. and pretty much the receiver houses everything. That's why it is the firearm. The stock isn't part of, it's, it's a part of the complete firearm, but it's not serialized, okay? When you think about an AR, the upper has to go on the lower. The lower contains the trigger, but a bolt action upper, which I've seen some from like Utah Precision and stuff that are cool as heck, I want to try one, but these bolt-action uppers, everything's self-contained. It's not like, you know, the, the bolt's just going to fly out the back of the upper or anything like that. It's there. It's self-contained, but it still needs a trigger. I mean, so they're wanting to classify the upper as a firearm and the lower as a firearm, so I guess if that happens, then my firearm's collection will double. <laughs> I mean, you know, what, what does this mean? The, the danger here, and I, I think that where people are, are certainly concerned, and they have reason to be concerned, is that what is going to stop the ATF or somebody to ask some stupid question and segue into some <coughs> conversation that's going to make uh, them go, you know what, well, maybe somebody shouldn't be able to just order an AR upper and have it shipped straight to the house because the way it is right now, I can buy an AR upper, okay, or an AR lower rather. I can build or buy an AR lower or a complete rifle. All I have to do is just drop two pins. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to convert it to another caliber or if I want to uh, add a different barrel length or whatever, all I have to do is just go online, order the upper, comes to my house, bam, or mm -hmm. order the parts, put it together yourself, mm -hmm. and put it together. So the issue then kind of becomes, okay, what are the dangers that you're now associating with this bolt action AR upper? So what what is it going to segue into now that is just going to allow them to try to, you know, violate your rights even more? Well, yeah, I okay. mean, like, so, all right, this is the other piece of the letter. The I'll put a link to this article below. You can yeah, read the entire it letter itself. But... Further, the ATF is pre this is part of the letter. Further, the ATF has previously determined that non-standard AR type upper assemblies, when attached to an AR type receiver, does not preclude the upper assembly from being classified as a firearm receiver. ATF has determined that when two receivers are assembled together into a firearm, this re this redesigned firearm contains two firearms receivers. So, you know, I'm thinking the same thing as the art the author here. You know, is the scar scar. Okay, SCAR-16, SCAR-17, there, well, you got one over there, but the upper is the serialized item. And there's a lot of firearms that are like that, where, like, the upper is serialized. And, you know, when I was, when, when I was reading this initially, when Eric told me about it, I, I thought, too, about, like, the Atrax, you know, the Lithgow Atrax. Because mm -hmm. the big problem with that rifle is it has to be imported, but there was a big to-do with determining what part was the actual firearm. Because on like a Steyr, it's basically a clone of a Steyr AUG. So the Steyr's serialized part, the serialized component is the receiver itself, but the barrel is a QD, and then you've got the stock housing and everything that everything sits in. And in the case of the SCAR, the barrel's not exactly what we would call QD by any stretch no. of the imagination. I mean, when you order a SCAR, that is one complaint that I do generally have about the SCAR is changing barrels on this thing isn't exactly a walk in the park. Mm. Uh, it's not a truly modular system like you would really consider the AR to be. Mm -hmm. um, it is a good gun. I do like the SCAR. 
I do think it is bogus that the upper is considered a firearm, yeah. not the lower. I mean, well, if an AR lower is considered a firearm, then why isn't this the firearm? It's the lovely... It's kind of dumb. It's the lovely GCA and other federal regulations. It but, is. It's stupid. I mean, but, they're literally just <clears throat> making this crap up as they go. Uh, but the big thing with the, the A-Trax, though, it's redesigned from the AUG, and the barrel and the upper all are in one unit. The optic and everything goes with it. So I'm just wondering if that kind of came into the into the ATF's mind as well, like other guns that are maybe... Well, I know they are trying out. to get approval I know, it, but, right now. You know, that's one of the big things with this whole deal is, yeah. all right, so if they consider non-standard AR upper, so what's a non-standard upper? All right, well, a SCAR is a non-standard upper. You can't just drop that on an AR-15 lower because yeah. it's completely different. Or would that, or would it end up being, oh, well, a, a AR upper that converts an AR to a shotgun? Or... Would what? that be considered non-standard? Okay, like the 410 uppers that you can just drop on your AR and run 410. Well, you're, you're converting a rifle to a shotgun. Now, would that be considered non-standard? It's a semi-automatic. It's not a bolt action. So it's just the wording is sketchy because mm -hmm. it can be taken any number of different ways. Yep. So what are they going to say non-standard? Would non-standard then mean any caliber other than the as-manufactured caliber well, of the gun the, when it was originally made? Yeah, the Come big, on. The big thing is, well, think about too, like side chargers. All right, a side charging upper is a non-standard upper. I mean, a yeah. standard AR-15 uses a charging handle, handle, a right. T-handle. It doesn't use a side charger, and then therefore the bolt is redesigned as well to accommodate that. Yeah, design. Or, or what if you took an AR-15 with an adjustable gas block and turned the gas off, and then you got a straight pull bolt action? Mm -hmm. So depending on how you set it up, or the come on, like Lantac EBG, uh, I think they're called like EBGCs. Um, you know, they're the straight pull replacements for the T-handle that replace the gas key and everything too. I believe. Yeah. You know, it makes it literally turns your rifle into a straight pull. The thing is, so, if they're willing to do this because it's a bolt action <laughs> rifle, think about what they may eventually segue into for a semi-automatic. Yeah. So it's scary <clears throat> to think that the directions that this could go in terms of, of where they could take it. And that's very, yeah. very concerning to me. So the big thing, and this says here, like, therein lies the rub, okay? This passage does not mention anything about bolt action receivers. I can see how they could come to the conclusion that bolt action receivers are traditionally considered the firearm and therefore need to be serialized, but this now bleeds over into AR-style firearms. The passage above can then be construed that any AR upper can be considered a firearm, and this is a slippery slope. Theoretically, it is. But now can that, like, and they mentioned specifically 50 BMG uppers. Well, can that 50 BMG upper be fired without an AR lower? Can it? Is it, it, is, is it its own self-contained entity? <clears throat> can I take that 50 BMG upper, chamber around in it, and effectively or even physically shoot it without a lower on it? Yes. Can you? Yes, you can. Right. Well, I can also take a Ruger 1022 barrel and slip around in it, hit it with a hammer, and make it go off too. Yes, you so, can. I mean, come on. It's the stupidest thing ever. Yeah. So, is the is would a 1022 barrel be considered a firearm? Ah. Uh, you know, I mean, like that. It's just the the what was it called? The specificity, specificity, specificity. What's the symbology there? <laughs> I can't think of the what word. You but mean it's symbolism? The ATF symbolism. is <laughs> the ATF is never specific in these letters and stuff, and it always raises questions like, why don't you just say what you really need to say and get it out there? I mean, right. don't beat around the bush. Tell us what you really want. To, to, be, clear, <laughs> to be clear, the way that those 50 caliber mm. uppers work is you go online, you order, and it's shipped straight to your front door. Mm -hmm. And you've now got an AR that can shoot 50 BMG. Yep, well, in certain states. In certain states. <laughs> I somehow imagine that that doesn't sit too well with them that a civilian can just own a 50 caliber and that no one like Barry used to say a 50 caliber nobody knows about but mm -hmm. the thing is it's just dumb it's an infringement it's an infringement on your rights of course it is it's just stupid well especially i mean all right so say so say say that they redetermine you know that okay every ar upper that's out there is now a firearm oh well a little too late for that huh really whoops I mean, or not all the ones out there are going to be grandfathered in, or you got to serialize them. dumb enough to go that route. But, I mean, look, I can understand a bolt action upper and everything, because it is it is different. But it still requires, my thing is, it still requires a lower to function as intended. All right, you could thing. take a Remington 700 action, pull it out of the stock, load around in the chamber, and just take the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the action with the trigger and go boom and shoot it. 
So my question would be is in this case, this 50 BMG, 50 BMG upper, mm -hmm. can it be used in that way? Not as intended. Right. But where, I mean, seriously, like where there's a will, there's a way, but you know, you're not going to stop somebody from doing something stupid. But so punish the rest of us just because a few people might, might, just because a few people might possibly, potentially do something. Wait a minute. Modify it into an illegal configuration? Oh no! The sky is falling. It was a fire fight! I mean, what about all the damn. What about. Boom! <laughs> Boom! I mean, oh, come on. Oh my gosh. I just can't handle it, man. I can't handle it. It makes my brain hurt. It makes my blood pressure go up. Oh. Guys, we hope you saw a little bit of humor and fun in this video, but this really is no laughing matter. I mean, anytime that some type of letter gets passed down from the ATF, uh, we always try to look at it with a scrutinizing eye because, you know, they're literally just making up the rules as they go along, and that's a scary thing. Uh, you know, they have to consider the big picture, and you, you want to, maybe in your mind, you want to feel like they have considered the big picture and that they've made some type of, you know, just opinion based on, you know, the facts and based on what they see. And they do have to, to some degree, sort of look at things from a certain perspective. And I can understand that. I, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, make it sound like uh, I'm just some unreasonable person or anything. However, you do have to understand the, uh, the possible ramifications that can come from such a letter and the ways it can be taken. Because you know Joe Snuffy's going to start asking questions. <laughs> well, what about blah, 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 blah. And then they're going to have to go, well, we never <laughs> thought about that. And then you wind up with a situation like you wind up with the freaking stupid braces uh, and all that stuff. It's, and it's funny. Well, the braces are very useful, well, but I'm saying that, you know. It is very funny that you mentioned that because I got a kick out of this part of this article. All right, so da, 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 da. All right, something else that is interesting is the fact that the ATF was instructed to no longer issue open letters, just like the infamous open letter in 2015 regarding the redesigning of braces as stocks when shouldered. Do you realize how much crap they got over that? They probably had their phones ringing off the hook for a month with people going, what the hell are you talking about? What's going on here? I don't know what you're... No, 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 blah, blah, blah. Just raising absolute hell, and they probably got tens of thousands of letters and emails about it. Oh, they're going to oh, get yeah. tens of thousands of letters about this. <laughs> so, and this wasn't, I mean, this was just released, you know, by, you know, a friend of a friend kind of thing, you know, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. But it does say, okay, look, it does say, now, uh, let's see, the passion, blah, 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 yakety yak, where'd it go, where'd it go, where'd it go? All right, so. This letter, all right, just so you guys know, okay, this letter specifically addresses Safety Harbor, okay, and only their products. So rather than issuing a generalized open letter, they are simultaneously sending letters out to similar manufacturers. So they're sending out letters to each of these manufacturers that has like 50 cal bolt action uppers or this out Or whatever other, they deem you to know. be, you know. Yeah. So, so I guess the anyways. real thing will be in another month, how many manufacturers wind up releasing a statement saying, oh, by the way, well, yeah, I this mean, is what's going like on. How many other manufacturers are going to get the same letter? Yes. With that, just different titles. That'll on be it. curious. I'll be curious to see that. So anyways, we just want to so put So no more general letters. No. Yeah. Specific letters. But oh, well. this is just something we want to bring to you guys' attention if you didn't know. So. Yep. It's uh, it's more bohicery. <sighs> if you know what that is. Bohica. Bohica. You know what Bohica means if you don't look it up. All right, guys, thanks for watching today's video. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, we try to have a little fun and, and joke around a little bit, but this is no laughing matter. We have to understand the ramifications of what these things can mean, and we always have to make sure we're paying attention to what's going on. Thank you guys so much who support our channel, both on Patreon and through the purchase of Man Cans. Guys, if you love our channel and you consume this content all the time, please consider supporting us on Patreon, purchasing a man can to help support our efforts. Guys, all the funds that we get from this project go right back into funding the channel and allowing us to put more and more content out for you guys. So if you're one of those people, one of the silent majority of people that support our channel, thank you so much for your support and thank you for allowing us to do what we do. Uh, have yourselves a great day. We have many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon. See you guys.